Um, we're just going to capture this so that when we're looking through the flip charts, we've got a little bit more detail around the story. So, uh, your two minutes, over to you. Okay, well, the Health Clinic for Global Wellbeing looks at energy security, food security, water security. This is looking at the uh, potential for energy security, looking at potential for wind and tidal power. Uh, there's plenty of uh, wind opportunities and tidal, we're a real hot spot for that uh, sort of uh, situation. We've got um, high average wind speeds, we've got a very high tidal flow, much higher than many other parts of the, the world. And the beauty of tidal power is it's entirely predictable, almost to the second, what your power generation would be for a given installation. Whereas wind is you know, subject to the vagaries of the weather. So there's great potential for uh, feeding into the system. And the peninsula itself has a lot of power infrastructure, so you can get the power to where you need it, which is one of, one of the big problems with a lot of wind and uh, tidal power, is getting the power to the end user. There's a long chain of uh, things we need to do here, and there's some pretty big black hat uh, things that can stop the whole project. Uh, you have to have community support, you've got to get the environmental impacts right, otherwise it's never going anywhere, and you've got to get support all around for the business case. And to get this project off the ground, the first thing we need is an advocacy group <coughs> to carry it forward, to get everything going, to get the design. Because what people might not be aware of there are many different options, both under wind and tidal, about how we actually do it. A lot of the objections around in the community are to visual impact or potential impact on uh, wildlife. We're not just talking about standard turbines. We're not just talking about, uh, well, you can have underwater turbines for the tidal. You can have tidal flows where you, you know, use the high tide difference in time between Swan Bay and Port Phillip Bay with turbines underneath. There's many options. Some of them would be completely invisible to the, the population with minimal impact. So there's, the technology is yet to be decided, which would be the best. So you'd have to go through a whole process there. But you need an advocacy group to actually start people looking at this process and start planning out. Then we can go down through the usual planning process, going through uh, project planning, feasibility, business case, going on down through government approvals all the way through. I think most of the projects are going to probably have a similar sort of <coughs> timeline, but it's getting the advocacy right. When we leave here, we need to set up an advocacy group, otherwise this project stays here. It doesn't go anywhere. Excellent. Thank you.